Tennessee Senator and member of the Senate Armed Services Commerce and Judiciary Committee is Marsha Blackburn. Marsha, good morning. Good morning to you. So, Thank you. Yeah, you know, Senator, you you voted for the defense bill. What do you make yes. of the president's decision um, to, to put a veto on it? Do you think Congress is going to override it? The House is back today, obviously, you and the Senate are back tomorrow. Right. That is right. The Senate will be in tomorrow. The House is back today taking their action. And Cheryl, I, I think that when you look at the NDAA on total, we have some of the most stringent cybersecurity protections we have ever had. And many of the provisions that the president has worked for, standing up Space Force, making certain that we have 5G implemented to use not only on our posts and bases, but also in some of our uh, technology that is coming online, having it available at our forward operating uh, bases. And as I said, the cyber components to protect our men and women in uniform, these are all big wins. There's a lot of money in there that we have uh, as we look at great power competition and dealing with China. Those are provisions that are paramount. We know as we look at 21st century warfare, as we look at China's aggression in the South China Sea, what they're doing in Hong Kong, Taiwan, that we have to be very watchful of every step they are taking. They are our adversary. Well, so I uh, support the NDAA that we passed. Okay. and. Um, the president is concerned about Section 230. We have legislation separately that will deal with that issue. His concerns are very valid, but uh, we need to pass the NDAA for our men and women in uniform. And Section 230, obviously, is protections for that are provided for big technology companies, Facebook right. and Twitter. And obviously, the president has been very vocal on Twitter and vocally that that you know that that these companies are, are stifling conservative voices. So, but but I. I have to ask you, though, you know, are you going to are you going to vote to override the president's veto tomorrow? And I ask you because this would actually be the first time that the president has had something like this happen in four years. It is. And uh, we would we were hopeful that the NDAA would be signed and we would be able to work through that. I do understand that the COVID relief bill has been signed, but he is sending that legislation back with some redlined items that need to be up for further review. And Cheryl, this points to exactly why we need budget reform and why we need to have that line item veto for the executive because he's right about the the omnibus and the wasteful spending that is just not appropriate. It's not mm -hmm. a priority as millions of Americans are hurting and small businesses are hurting and they are needing to see relief and see it now. Well, I, I'm going to take that as a, a yes on the on the vote tomorrow from you, Senator, simply because I know that you've been very supportive yes. of the NDAA and you've said that several times. Yes. Uh, let's move, though, to kind of the political ramifications of all of this. You know, you've got President Trump. He announced, uh, tweeted last night he's going to go to Georgia uh, and hold a rally yes. ahead of the runoff elections. Georgia's home to 13 military bases. So uh, I'm asking, do you think that his veto of the defense bill could play a, a negative factor uh, in Georgia? How do you see it? Uh, what Georgians are going to look at most, I fully believe, is that uh, David Perdue, Senator David Perdue, who is running for re-election, has been one of the most fierce advocates for our U.S. military. And Georgia does have more military uh, bases and posts than any other state. The military presence and the civilian military presence there is incredibly strong. And I do not see Georgians going to the polls and voting for David Perdue's opponent, who is wanted to defund military, or Kelly Leffler's opponent, who wants to defund the police. So that will play into, into it. I do think that when you look at uh, the president's support for rebuilding the military, it is unquestionable. Mm -hmm. He has done so much work 
to make certain that we put in good stead these long-term contracts that we need in order to remain a superpower. Mm -hmm. He has upped the pay for men and women in uniform and has worked with Congress to do that. And as I said, Senator Perdue has been one of the closest um, in working with the president on these issues and supporting the men and women in uniform. I want to bring in pollster Lee Carter because, you know, Lee, you've always got your, your finger on the pulse of the voter coming to this conversation, Lee. So I'm really curious, Senator. It's great to see you this morning. Um, you too, what do you think the role of I mean, the president going to Georgia is a, is a big deal, but when you know that 70% of Republicans believe that there was voter fraud. About half believe that there was enough voter fraud to overturn the election. Um, and the president is continuing with that narrative. Um, do you believe, and I think there's a lot of pollsters out there who do believe, that there's going to be some voter suppression as a result of the belief that their votes weren't counted? And how do you address that? When you're on the ground in Georgia, as I have been, what you hear from Georgians is they can't believe that their governor and their state house and their state senate have not been in special session dealing with this. So they don't blame the president. And what they will talk about is they want to make certain that Republicans retain these two Senate seats to help protect the president's legacy and to keep parts of his agenda moving forward. The tax cuts that were put in place were great for Georgia, whether you're a small business owner or a farmer. You also are looking at what happened with the CARES funding. And Georgia got, I think it was about $46 billion in relief from CARES Act funding. Ooh. People are appreciative of that. And they know the president has been the leader of that. And they're thrilled that in, on January 4th, he is going to be in Dalton, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And he knows how to hold a rally uh, and bring out the crowds to yes, support he does. him. Yeah. Uh, Senator, before I let you go, I no. do want to ask you about the Nashville bombing, this Christmas Day bombing yes. with this RV that exploded on the street outside of an AT&T building. Three injured, dozens of, dozens of businesses destroyed. Do you have a message for your own constituents? It's obviously it was not the Christmas morning that, that many in Nashville expected. Oh, Cheryl, this has just been the most um, heartbreaking situation. But I hope that everyone has the opportunity to pull up the, the press conference that the six police officers who really thwarted and the plot and saved a lot of lives uh, pull that press conference up. They put a human face on yeah. the life of a police officer and hearing their stories and the way they told those stories, the emotion, the impact, uh, it is something that is truly impressing, mm -hmm. impressive. But you have uh, officers Llewellyn, Hosey, Topping, Sippos, Wells and Miller and the job that they did and the way they carried out their work. They truly are heroes. Mm -hmm. And anybody who says, oh, I think we should defund the police, they should pull up that interview yeah. and watch every second of it. You're preaching to the choir because I watched it yesterday and yes. they were so humble. I was so touched by yes. how they just were like, well, you know, it's just, it's our job. You know, if anybody that wants to defund the police out there, you're right. Go back and watch those officers and the way that they acted. It was amazing. That's right. Senator Marsha Blackburn, a lot of eyes on Washington in the next two days. We will see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. See you then. All right.